What we'll do is we'll start off by talking about um, John Walsh. Okay. Right there. got this thing. It's a great, that's a lovely tripod you have there. It's only on me? Well, this is getting really awkward. Can you not see Mitch? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Welcome in Cougar Sports, ESPN 960. This is Cougar Country. I'm Ben Criddle. We're broadcasting live from Thanksgiving Point Golf Course, and we're also Facebook living. Uh, thanks to Mitchell Harper and utilizing his uh, millennial skill set to employ such technologies as a tripod, an iPhone, and uh, the wonderful world of Facebook Live. Mitchell Harper is my co-host today. I'm sorry we we, we didn't uh, because of the Facebook Live thing. I'm completely thrown off of my 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 mojo here. Typically, I like to have the ESPN 960 starting lineup music to bring you in, Mitch. But let's do it right off the bat. The Big Stick Mitch of the Cougar Center podcast. Also, the wizard behind the curtain over at CougarNation.com of the Rivals Network. We're going to talk recruiting today amongst so many other things. I know you want to delve into this John Walsh interview, get to some of that nitty-gritty. But Mitchell... How art thou? I'm doing great, Ben. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, the Facebook Live, we're, we're going next level with uh, here on ESPN 960, so you got to make sure to like our Facebook page. It's uh, we we got to give the fans what they want. They want more content. We're going to give them that. Are you sure they want to see us? I, I don't know if they want to see us. I mean, they got we got your Cholula in the background. I have a problem. Ketchup. Look, anyone that has a, a similar problem to me, I mean, I, whenever I eat anything, I need to have some sort of a sauce. <laughs> So you can see the Cholula hot sauce with chili, a little bit, a hint of chili lime. Uh, give me a shout out. Uh, give me an amen. Hallelujah, amen. I need some ketchup. I need some Cholula sauce. Don't hate. We, you are definitely a sauce guy. I've learned that since uh, since working here more t more often here on ESPN 960. I, I've learned that Ben needs to have his sauces with every meal he eats. I need it savory. <laughs> and I don't blame you. I'm a condiments guy as well. I gotta have those peppers, those salts. So I'm with you, Ben. I'm I'm here for you. And uh, I am happy to be on another exciting day of BYU Sports. Just the news keeps coming through. We're uh, live, as I mentioned, at Thanksgiving Point Golf Course. Stop in, say hello. I got a great deal for you Cougar fans, all right? Check this out. The $99 Vanguard Players Card. You get four rounds of golf, and uh, that's to the Vanguard location. So they got six courses. You get Thanksgiving Point Golf Course, the ranches, Coral Canyon, Sky Mountain, Falcon Ridge, and, of course, the Ranch Club. On top of that, with that membership, you're going to get 25 to 50 percent discount on green fees and cart fees. Uh, Monday through Thursday, 50 percent off on your green fees and cart fees. Friday, Saturday, your peak times and peak days, it's only 25 percent off. But guys, I know many of you, you only golf maybe four times a year. This is the deal for you. Come in, I'll, I'll get you a great deal on it, $99. Uh, or you can call 801-768-7401. That's 801-768-7401. We have a fantastic show for you Cougar fans. Make sure you're streaming us, ESPN960sports.com. You can Facebook Live us here if you'd like to tune in that way. Uh, also, download our podcast, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, Google Play Music, however you like to consume that. And also our application. Mitchell Harper didn't even have it downloaded when he started working with us here at ESPN 960. we got to let everybody know that you have an ESPN 960 app. It's free, and you can consume all of our content there. Go to the iPhone or Android app, app store, download it today. It's brought to you by Freeway Tire Pros and American Fork Cougar fans. If you're here in Utah Valley and you need new tires, come to me. Send me, DM me, slide into my DMs. I, and I feel like there's always like a weird connotation with sliding into the dms like it's like it's like not a, a proper thing to do amongst men you know 
it, like you can only slide into a, the opposite sex DMs. Am I, am I wrong here? No, you're you're not wrong because usually that's a. That's so a what is it like when someone comes into my DMs and they're a man? What is it? It's just uh, just two bros. Just just a message. It's not sliding. It's just uh, you know hitting you up, just talking, chatting it up, but uh, no sliding. When it's no, uh, sliding, no sliding involved, it's it's a uh, man to woman. Which and, sliding happens in sports? I don't know why it's so unmanly. Next thing you got to do if if you're gonna take a next level. Maybe drop airplay if you're an Apple person. I, I see that's the popular thing amongst air, amongst kids now. Dropping things via airplay. All right, don't slide into my DMs. Just shoot me a message and send me your tire size. Okay, that's all the size I want to know. Tire size, and uh, and then I'll get you a quote from Freeway Tire Pros and American Fork. We got a great show for you, Cougar fans. But I wanted to give you an opportunity in this first segment before we get to the nitty gritty to. Well, maybe we should just have it a part of the. Let's have it as a part of a nitty gritty. What do you say? Let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's get after it. Brought to you by BYUtickets.com. Brandon says he's already enjoyed our DM sessions. Brandon Sigurney. Shout out to you, Grenade. I doubt Grenade's Facebook living us, though. He can hear me right now? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, want, I want him to hear me. The Nitty Gritty, brought to you by BYUtickets.com. For any and every BYU sporting event, I would advise you to purchase your tickets at BYUtickets.com. Why? Because uh, you get the best deals there, and you're supporting the athletic department that you love, and the student-athletes that entertain you on the daily, on the weekly. And the Olympic sports are in full swing right now, so support all those Olympic sports while we're in the football and basketball off-season. But it's never off-season from you, Mitchell. There's always recruiting information to be tweeted to be DM'd, no sliding, but you could you can DM people info, insight on Facebook, on CougarNation.com. Uh, Mitchell, let's start off with the John Walsh interview because I know uh, you were very excited about this particular interview. BYU fans everywhere are listening to this thing. I got probably about 50 texts uh, regarding John Walsh's comments. Uh, it's so great to reach out to him and embrace him and welcome him back. I feel like this was kind of like a welcome back. And I, I know in 2010, he, he was at the, the UW game. He and Robbie Bosco reconnected. There were tears shed over the phone. And uh, so he was re, re, re-welcomed or re-embraced uh, by the BYU football family. But uh, it's been a while. So we got him on, and it was a fantastic interview. It was enlightening. It was enriching. You can tell he got emotional at times as he was expressing uh, just the, the the experiences that he that he went through as a BYU football player, and then uh, the subsequent subsequent events after uh, he declared for the draft. Uh, but you can't help but come away from this interview liking John Walsh even more than you once did. Yeah, I, I agree, Ben. I, I, you put it best when I when you said that I was excited for. Uh, for you to have him on the show because, yeah, I mean, John Walsh is a name that, you know, any BYU fan, BYU football fan, that they know that name, John Walsh. But it's it, there's not, it's always thought of, oh, well, he, there's always this underlying feeling that he underachieved or he wasn't, um, you know, in the, the pantheon of the great BYU quarterbacks. But I'm with you, Ben. Hurtful, I, too. I always think that uh, John Walsh, I mean, in terms of his accolades and his talent, guy was top-notch in every sense of the word. I mean, he was an elite quarterback. Had there been recruiting sites back then, I mean, you're talking about a, a five-star guy in, in John Walsh, and it, it was really interesting to hear him talk about how, you know, BYU didn't reach out to him when he was struggling and, and how he really didn't make that effort to, to reach out to BYU either, and I think that was a, a, a great opportunity, and I thought that, you know, I, I thought back to, you know, Kalani Sataki and tying it in with this current program, and that I, I think you're not going to hear many stories like that anymore because... This current crop of coaches and the staff and the program today, they, they really want to make sure that all alumni relations are at a strong point. They don't want any stories like that mm-hmm. coming to fruition, coming to the surface, uh, you know, where the program wasn't reaching out to them when, you know, they were maybe down. And, and John Walsh, I mean, yeah, he, he kind of maybe left some, some cloud, as he put it, a, a dark cloud, but I, I thought he was a great quarterback at BYU, and it was good to kind of – understand more context behind you know his reasoning and, and as to why what stood out to you give me something specific that I, you enjoyed I, I just the the emotional uh you know kind of how devastating it was for him to go from being considered a number one quarterback to going the seventh round I thought that was kind of interesting that was really interesting to me and I think it shed light 
into how critical these decisions are for guys to leave early, whether it's the NFL or the NBA. It's a, it's a risky proposition because you get a lot of people feeding info into it to you, and it might not be accurate. It might not be with your best interest in mind. And John Walsh was touted as the number one quarterback. Then he goes in the seventh round, and his career was done before he could even blink. So it really puts into context how you know it's it's a tough decision, and uh, it can be something that lasts with guys for the rest of their life. And that seems to be the case with with John Walsh. But man, I hope that uh, he has an opportunity. You know, to carry that alumni flag for BYU because I think that'd be an awesome story. And, and uh, he said he was completely open to it. He he doubted the pool that I had. And granted, <laughs> it's not my pool. I use peer pressure to you, essentially. You do. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know as well as I do. I mean, I'll peer pressure you, pressure you into doing certain things that you just do not want to do. Yeah. And uh, it's I escalated I, quickly. Sometimes. <laughs> Got a little awkward, and 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 things will escalate quickly there at BYU. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that John will run out the flag this year. They will find a game for him. I know Jack DeMooney's hot on the trail of John Walsh right now. He played with John, so I mean that that's going to be something that that's it'll be a great story and uh, happy that interview took place. And it's one that I think a lot of BYU fans definitely were were interested in. I was definitely uh, happy to hear that interview with you and Jake did a fantastic job yesterday. So if you didn't hear that. Make sure to listen on the podcast uh, because that was a great interview. Uh, Jamal Williams getting ready for the NFL draft. Nicole Williams, uh, I believe, jumped on to BYU Sports Nation. It was yesterday or today uh, and uh, talked about the importance of Jamal Williams graduating. The degree was our number one concern. I'm very, very proud of him for getting that degree. Uh, it's, nice, it's a nice safety net. And, and you, you see it so many times, BYU fans, where – Football players do not get their degrees. They don't take uh, their academics as seriously as they should. At BYU, I think it's better than other programs, uh, from what I've heard, even up on the hill, where you know Christian Papula, he 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 took his 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 services, his talents, to uh, the northern hill up there in Lamanite country. But uh, we wish him luck, and uh, we would say, you know. Engage in academics there. Engage in those academics. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't count all your chickens before they hatch, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what John Walsh told us yesterday. But uh, number one concern for Jamal Williams' mom and Jamal was to get that degree. And uh, really proud of Jamal, what he was able to accomplish at BYU. Yes, on the field, but off the field, he did everything that he needed to do as well to make things right and to make his family proud of him. Uh, shout out to you, Jamal Sw- uh, Swag Daddy Williams. A couple things I wanted to bring up from the Fan Fest, since we're talking about running backs here and the individuals that will ultimately take over for Jamal Williams. And this is a discussion that we've been having the entire offseason. Spring ball was littered with, with different uh, opinions from, from different sources. Jay Caress is high on Ula Tolutau. Uh, there's guys that are very high on K.J. Hall and what he can bring to the table and his progression. Squally Canada is my dude for the time being because of the experience, yes, and because I think he's the most versatile back. The thing that he lacks is just the ability to catch out of the backfield right now, and I think that can re- be remedied with, with repetitions. But uh, uh, another guy that was brought up at the Fan Fest that apparently is having some vision problems. Jeremy, cue up this sound for me because uh, Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan were interviewing, interviewing Reno Mahe, uh, at the fan fest, and apparently, apparently, and I've I've wondered why this is because every single bit of film that I watch of Riley Burt, every single bit of it, I can see that he has issues running between the tackles. Whenever it gets a little bit convoluted, and granted, many running backs do have that same issue. It's not like this is like, oh well, he needs to definitely get his eyes checked. You know, that's the automatic conclusion if he can't run between the tackles. He needs to get contact lenses. He needs to get glasses. But this is actually somewhat of a, an eye-opening piece of information, an ear-opening. I was like, wait, he has vision issues? And now they're excited because he can actually see. He was he may, may have been legally blind. We're talking about Riley Burt here. Riley Burt apparently had some vision issues, both uh, it, I mean, literally, he has vision issues. That's why he's probably not very good at, at maybe running between tackles. We'll see if it actually affects him. But I would say that uh, it, it it should. It should. I mean, with, with increased vision, he should be able to run between the tackles a little bit more effectively. Jeremy, let me know when you have that queued up. Yeah, go ahead and play that for us.
Riley Burt, uh, you know, maybe that sheds a little bit of light, Ben, as to why he, uh, I think, coming out of spring ball was maybe a little bit behind some of the names that you just mentioned earlier. I mean, Riley Burt's talent is, is, is kind of, he's that guy for BYU fans that they just want to, he, they want to see succeed. There's always like yeah. a certain running back. That, uh, there's BYU a certain fans, player. There, there is, and there's, there's certain guys. There's a wide receiver. There's a quarterback. There's a running back. Riley Burt's that guy at running back, and, and I'm high on him too. He's the I mean, guy on the team. You know, one thing that's coming out of spring, Ben. I, I kind of thought because because he, in my opinion, and again, I, I think Rio Mai kind of sheds some light as to him. He's going to stay at, at running back, but I always kind of wondered maybe he needs to go back to quarterback. Maybe he needs to mm-hmm. consider another position because that's where he started coming when he came out of. Box Elder, but you know I think that you know if he wearing wearing contacts or glasses, maybe that's going to help his vision. But I still think that guys like Kavika Fanua, KJ Hall, Squally Canada, those are the guys in Ula Tolu Tau. I, I would I think ideally BYU has the luxury to maybe redshirt an Ula Tolu Tau, and then Squally, KJ Hall, Fanua, and Burt are the your running back core. Get the Ed Lamb sound as well for uh, Kavika Fanua, because Kavika Fanua to me. I think the, the coaching staff is really high on him and his athleticism. I mean, Klein's talking fills. This is his natural position playing at running back. Yeah. What's interesting is, you know, when, like Riley Burt, I always thought that it was because he was afraid of contact that he would be bouncing it outside. And you see it consistently. He's always bouncing things outside. And, and Reno is seeing this every single day. And he's like, why don't you stay inside? And when he does stay inside, he's just running into the back of offensive linemen. Consistently, and so you can hear the the breath of fresh air that that is the the, the knowledge that yeah he's got vision issues. Uh, that's a huge stride because you see the ability you want it to happen. I mean, I was down there at practice one time talking with Mark Lyons, and he he was asking me questions about who who would he who would, who would he who does he want to know about? What have you been seeing? Ben? What do you think about Riley Bird? I love Riley Bird. That's everyone. Everybody wants to talk to me about Riley Burt. Last year, last year. year it was uh, it was probably Tanner Mangum that you wanted to talk about, but uh, you know I, I do think that there are others that can emerge as your your go to running back, and I'm intrigued by Kavika Fanua. Uh, why? Because Ed Lamb has given him love. This is what Ed Lamb had to say at the Fan Fest. Yeah, that's that's probably Kavika Fanua, and he's the one that got that award. I can't remember exactly what our award was was named. Uh, Who knows what that award was? Something like that. <laughs> Our end of the year banquet, but he uh, led the team in coverage tackles on the special teams. He played a significant amount of defense. Now he's moved over to the offense. I mean, they just, I can't imagine when I was a player playing all three phases of the game. Like the amount of talent, the amount of ability. It's one thing to be, you know, like Corbin Kalfusi, Bronson, those guys to go from basketball to football. That's awesome, too. But to play offense like running back, to step over and play linebacker and be productive like he was and make plays, and then to lead the team. You know, Dyne Lake was leading the team all through the regular season, and then Kavika had two great tackles against Wyoming to lead the team in coverage tackles for the season. That's where the men are, is on the special teams, coverage team. So, my opinion, Kavika Flanua. That's where the men are. That's where you find out whether you're a football player or not. I hate the individuals that are always avoiding special teams. I made my my money on the special teams when I was at BYU. That's the only reason why anyone even looked at me to get in to get some reps in at cornerback is because on every single special teams I was trying to beat out the ones that were trying to defend me or I was trying to get by them. Uh, Kavika Fanua was a special teamer uh, MVP this past season. Uh, the granted, unsung hero was the award he got. Yeah, the unsung hero, and and we don't we didn't talk enough about Kavika Funa, Funua last year. Obviously, are we going to talk more about him this year, Mitch? How much? I, I think we are, and you know, I was a bit surprised, Ben, that he switched from linebacker to running back. I honestly, I kind of forgot that he was at running back when he was up in in, in high school because that move when it was announced, I thought, you know, he he was really good at linebacker, mm-hmm. and he and he made those plays on special teams, and I just thought there was a really bright future ahead at linebacker. But there's clearly a need at running back. I mean, there we've what we've heard all what have we heard all along? It's running back by a committee. They need someone to emerge. Well, I can is going to be the starter, and rightfully so. He should get that opportunity to be the first guy out of the gate. But you know, Kavika Fonua is someone I think can definitely be a, a running back that can be, do some really good things for BYU. Now, uh, and I think his just athleticism is off the charts, and I think that's why. They're really excited about the possibilities there 
at running back. And you know, going back to Ed Lamb's comments, I, I think what he those comments are interesting to me because the, what's the, been the common sentiment from this staff ever since they took the job? They're going to play the best twenty-two, and this staff really does truly make a focus on special teams. What do they do every time they they meet in team meetings? The entire team is watching special teams field. There is a focus on special teams. So, yeah, guys like yourself, when you're playing and, and guys now in the program, you can find playing time by making plays on special teams. Mm -hmm. So no one should be ducking the opportunity to play spe on special teams. So if you have a chance right away to play and it's just at special teams, you could be a guy like Kavika Fanua this season. We're going to be having an opportunity to play quite a bit. I think Fanua is definitely going to be battling K.J. Hall for that second back on the depth chart behind Squally Canada going into week one against Portland State. My question to you is this. Which issue can be remedied the quickest at the running back position? So if I go Squally, what are his, what's his issue? Hands out of yeah. the backfield. Burt, it's vision in between the tackles. Uh, Ula, his weight, yeah. got to lose some, some, some poundage. Fanua, scheme, reps, he's got to learn the, the, the position. The, the, you got to learn the position again, right? K.J. Hall. Putting on weight, you got to be able to run between the tackles. You got to—he's got great vision, but you can't get arm tackled by the 290-pound uh, defensive lineman that's also getting blocked by the guard. Just because he reaches out his hand doesn't mean you should—you should be stymied in the hole. Uh, it, it, Trey Die, same thing. So, which one is most easily remedied, in your opinion? That's a great question. I, I would say. Man, I, I, would, I would say Kavika Fanua. I, I think that if he puts in the work to You think learn, it's scheme? I, I think that... If he learns the position, that's going to be the easiest. I think Fanua... Because, I mean, hands is... We've been hearing about Squally's hands since that Vegas Bowl. That's when it became came to the, the forefront, came to light mm -hmm. for fans, and we heard it in spring ball, and we, we've seen it here and there in, in glimpses. Now, I, I think that... I think Fanua just... Be, and I, I should say this too, Ben. I think that the highest potential out of these backs is Toluto. Uh, but I, I just feel that really? I think his highest ceiling, I think he's the guy with the highest ceiling, the highest potential. You don't think Eric Dickerson is is uh, the highest potential? Bert, I, I just, I, again, maybe this is my biases coming back from like high school and, and the recruiting process, but I just look at, you know, Bert's a real developmental guy. I think if he can be a, a, a second running back, then I think he's exceeding expectations in my opinion. Maybe that's just the ceiling I've, I've set. But I think Tolu Tau can be an all-time back at BYU where he's rising up the charts as far as rushing yards are concerned, and he could be an all-timer. I think that's Tolu Tau's potential. And his, I mean, he averaged 13 yards a carry his senior year at East. I mean, the guy was absolutely dominant. I remember watching those games at, at East High, and I was thinking, man, this is the best running back I've seen in the high school ranks since, like, David Fia Fia and, and Fahu Tai back in the days at Granger. So... Tolu Tau is exceptional, and I think he has the highest potential out of these backs, but I think weight is going to be really difficult for him to get that down and to be a real significant contributor to the level that I think coaches expect him to be. Now, the, the highest potential guy, i got to disagree with you on this, but I like where you're going with it because I do love me some Ula. Highest potential is actually Riley Bird, okay. but I've just been, I just doubted his ability to be physical and to be able to run between the tackles and, and be able to pick his holes properly. Uh, doubt the confidence that he has in himself because many times when you fail and you fail and the coaching staff doesn't believe in you they, they begin to give up on you and when they give up on you then you give up on yourself and I have to give kudos to, to Reno for not giving up on him because he keeps asking him the question why can't you see what I'm telling you to see and, and, and lo and behold like, like l listen to Reno again Reno uh, t tell me about the the biggest uh, what did he what was it the the the, the biggest step that that occurred in, in within the running back group during spring. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that that it would have to be this. You you just hear a sigh of relief from Reno. Yeah. No, and, and Riley Bird too. I, I, I think that, that that's notable that, you know, how Reno is still kind of probing because he could easily just say, you know what, we got enough guys already. You know, Riley Bird, you're out of out of train of thought, out of, out of sight. But I, I'm sure Reno looks at that 2015 film and says, man, this guy, anytime he touched the ball, it felt like, what, he was getting seven or eight yards, right? I mean, that's why BYU fans are so high on him. And I think that's why oh, the yeah. coaching staff redshirted him last year, too, because yeah. they felt there was a big picture 
where he was factoring into their big future plans. But I still think they'll bend. Uh, and, and I like that we're kind of disagreeing here because I think that speaks to the, the versatility that BYU's running backs have. It's just, will they get that clear cut back? Because, I mean, I think in this offense... Do you like this situation? I, I, not ideally, because especially with a pro-style I don't like offense, this situation at all. you right got to have a feature back. you got to have that, that bell cow in this pro-style Tanner offense. Tanner needs somebody to help him out here. Yeah, no, I agree. When he goes on that play-action boot in that outside linebacker defensive end stays at home because he doesn't respect that running back to be able to make the right read and get upfield, and he doesn't want to make that play, that puts Tanner in a very high-risk situation. And I trust Tanner. I think he'll make the right decision. He'll throw the ball away rather than getting pummeled into the turf. But it's imperative. I'm telling you, it is critical that Tanner Mangum does not get injured this year. Uh I don't know if you looked at our backups, but they need some work right now. Well, and also, Ben, I mean, I just go back to last season. When did BYU win football games? When the feature back, Jamal Williams, was getting 25 to 30 carries. I mean, that's what was, that was the model for success, and you just don't have that. That is a huge portion of what BYU did last year, and this offense still has a lot of question marks. And you mm-hmm. just the receivers, who were the playmakers there? So, yeah, that's why I'm kind of concerned about that running back and how they did not get someone to emerge and be the feature back. And that's why I'm re- reserved about Squally being the number one guy. Yeah, he can. He, I, I like that he can have it right now, but I, I'm still kind of leery to say he's going to hold on to that spot after a few weeks of, of playing really good teams. We're going to know how good or how bad, if you want to put it that way, about BYU's running backs because the schedule, as we all know, is as tough as it's ever been out of the gates. Jeremy, do you have the, the Reno Mahe sound in which he, he expresses that the, if the season started today, it would be Squally Canada? If not, no worries. Um, I just wanted to I, I wanted to be able to hear him express. Got, yeah. yeah, go ahead and play it then for me so I can listen to it. I, I want you to just kind of read between the lines here, Mitch. Maybe. It, it, I can't label that, but sorry. But, I mean... More in soul, I, I could I'd probably lean towards Squally with all the experience, experience. he has and what have. But a, you know, sometimes it's going to come down to the play. What kind of play? Where we are on the field, and you know, kind of what Ty is feeling as as the head guy making those decisions. Go ahead. What does that tell you, Mitch? I, I think that you know he's the guy that has the most game experience. I think they feel that they can trust him the most right now because as far Did as you hear trust in that voice of his, I, I think well. I think they can tr- trust him more than maybe the other the other. When, when you right hear now. a kid say "lean" in recruiting, what does that mean? That's is that a, su- that's a, a subject to our interpretation. Yeah, it's it's a, it's kind of interpretation, and it's kind it can it can change by day. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's not uh, set in stone. Uh, I think that the biggest thing is that he has the most game experience out of this group against yeah. the best qual best opposition. KJ Hall does have some film that where he did succeed, but. I go back to the bowl game against Wyoming with KJ. And what was it? He had two carries, and mm-hmm. he was just he was mis- it was a mismatch. I mean, he just couldn't he couldn't shed those those tacklers. So yeah. size is, is KJ Hall's worst enemy, and that's unfortunate because I like the guy's speed. Uh, but you know, Squally, I, I think you're going to see a ton when KJ and Trey are in the backfield. You're going to see a ton of motion out of the backfield. Yeah ton of motion a lot of like trap draw type of stuff you know granted i know that that's a, kind of an old school uh a football and play, i like that yeah, i wouldn't be surprised if you see it and i like that i think that's that speaks to ty's ability to recognize the personnel that he has and that was something that was a big um complaint from fans in the past was felt like the previous staff didn't have a clear feel of what the personnel strengths were and i think that that's something i'm very excited about ben is is how will they use all these different backs because i think they all bring a certain different dynamic mm. to the table. And that's what's kind of interesting. If you can put all the best of each of these backs, you'd have one hell of a running back. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, don't, make... I, don't, I don't like the situation at all. I, I don't like a committee either. I want to see a I mean, future I back. hate to, like, spin it into a positive thing. That, no, that, you know, I, I, I mean, like, it's kind of like an arduous task for me where I'm like, yeah, we have all these great guys, and this is where they're good at. It's like, well, yeah, we just we, somebody's got to step up. Yeah. Someone has to improve in that area. I just put it out on Twitter, Cougar fans. Chime in on that question. I want to get your thoughts on it. Which which issue is the most uh, you know likely to remedy itself in the off season? 
Uh, I want to get your thoughts there. Dennis Pitta is pretty confident about the tight ends, though. At least you can hang your hat on that. On the tight ends, after the spring game, he said Matt Bushman stood out as someone who's a guy that could be a difference maker for this team. He was making plays and runs really well. He's a big kid with size and athleticism. Uh, that is your nitty-gritty brought to you by BYUtickets.com. For any and every BYU sporting event, purchase your tickets at BYUtickets.com. You support the athletic department as well as the student-athletes that you love. Question of the day on the other side, Mitch Harper. Big Stick Mitch from the Cougar Nation is my co-host, Cougar Sports, on ESPN 960. All right, folks, we're going to turn off uh, the Facebook Live. There you go. Thanks First for segment. tuning in, guys. We'll try to do this every day, nitty-gritty, opening segment, kind of set the tone. We'll have some uh, um, some interviews, some key interviews. We'll go on Facebook Live, but count on every day for the most part. Opening segment, 3 to 3.30-ish, we'll go on Facebook Live. So share this, tell your friends, like the page, support us, we appreciate that. And go download... Uh, the iOS and Android apps you can listen wherever you are, ESPN 960. And subscribe to CougarNation.com. <laughs> That's right. Subscribe on Cougar Nation. It's only two dollars and what how much is it? <laughs> Twenty-six cents I, I, a day, I, 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 folks. Two dollars. Twenty-six <laughs> cents a day. <laughs>